Ladies and gentlemen, what does it actually mean when a country decides to move away from nuclear and fossil fuels over to renewables until 2050? Well, in economic terms, it means that in the next 35 years, we are going to see an almost complete exchange of our capital stock. Now, on the one hand, that is a huge challenge. On the other hand, of course, it is also a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity for our society because it means if we are successful, a sustainable energy system, we would be able to cut our greenhouse gases by 80 to 95 percent until 2050. It would also mean that we would have in the long run a much more secure power system because renewable sources are domestic sources, those sources we do not have to import and we cannot depend on. And I'm personally convinced it will also in the long run be the economic superior energy system. We are away from the phase of technological development. We are now in the phase of creating a new power system. Of course, now renewables have a different role. Last year, we had an increase of the renewables. Now we are beyond 28% now. The renewables are the biggest source of our power structure. They surpassed uh, lignite. And now the question is, are we going to be able to handle these increasing amounts? So our fundamental reform of our support system, number one, defined a corridor, a growth corridor. Ten years from today, 2025, we want to have reached a level of 40 to 45 percent renewables in our power system. Second, we said very clearly, now it's the times are over where everybody got what he needed. Now we are going to concentrate on the cheap technologies, wind and solar. We want to expand every year five gigawatts wind and solar. Number three, we decided now to integrate the renewables into the market. Feed-in tariff means that you just feed in your electricity. It's not your responsibility to market your product, your electricity. We changed that. Now everybody is responsible. Every new installation that produces electricity, the owner is responsible to market his own product. And the third, I'm, I'm sorry, the fourth objective of this reform was a redistribution of the costs. This uh, first phase was very expensive. There were also some mistakes made, no question about it. I can actually put a price tag to that bill. It's 21 billion euros that we have to pass on to the consumers. And since we made 20-year commitments, uh, those installations that went on the grid in 2005 still receive money for 20 years. So until 2025, we have to pay that bill. But it's not a cost factor anymore, the new installations now, because they are at the same level as fossil generation. So what we needed to do was a redistribution of this cost, of this learning curve, and we paid especially attention that our energy intensive industry was not burdened with costs that they couldn't bear. There was a conflict with the European community uh, over, over state aid, but at the end we were able to successfully install a system that of the 21 billion euros, our energy intensive industry pays only 600 million. Already in Germany now, we have about 1.5 million installations. Large number is solar, wind, the conventional generation capacity. And as we are expanding our renewables, someday we're going to have two and maybe even more installations in this country. I am absolutely convinced there is only one system that can coordinate supply and demand, and that is the market. So the market design is actually the key question now, and that, as I mentioned before, should not be a national decision. It should be a decision that Germany and uh, its neighbors together make. And we are a big step ahead of this now, and I hope that the EU Commission that is working also on these market design questions takes this opportunity that there's already agreement among 12 member states 
and is going to implement that also in their, their future policy.